also apologize in advance. I've kind of had a little setback as the day has gone on today where it pertains to me being sick. It's been very windy and cold here in Virginia and the temperature has gone up and down for days. So it's been really, really hard for me to shake this illness that I have. And I'm a little bit out of breath. And my uh, nose is all red. And my lips are red. That's why I didn't do a um, face video. I know uh, there's not much of a uh, picture perfect what you're seeing right now, but hopefully if you close your eyes and just listen to me whisper, hopefully it won't matter. I told you guys when I released my top 10 favorite movie video that I might be turning it into a series because I love movies. I grew up watching so many movies, and I just love them. I love a good movie, and today I actually finished watching one of my favorite 80s movies, and so I thought it would be fun if I did a top 10 favorite movies list and it was really hard for me to pick only 10 movies very hard because I love 80s movies like they don't make them like 80s movies anymore but I pretty much thought about it and I think that my list is ironclad, so let's laminate it like Ross does with, with this list of uh, uh, actresses he can sleep with on Friends. So it's done. So I've, I've gave it a lot of thought. Watch me change my mind in the middle of this list. But I thought it would be something fun we could do. And it's something where you learn a little bit more about me and what I love, where it pertains to movies, books, it don't matter, books, food, whatever. I love getting to know my favorite ASMR artist. So, and please put down in the comments, I am going to try to do this weekly for you guys. I'm going to start with movies and then when I'm done with those, so every month weekly, I'll do like, you know, favorite action movies, favorite rom-coms, like this, the, end, the ending of this month can be movies, but like next month, it could be like my favorite foods, like, you know, favorite Chinese dishes or favorite American dishes, you know, so on and so forth. Because I remember Coming Escape doing a top 10 series back in the day. And sadly, I do not think she has those videos anymore. But I love them. So, and... So let me know down in the comments what top 10 movie list you would like to hear from me next week, whether it be rom-coms or books to movies or action movies or movies. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter at all. So just let me know down in the comments. And then I would also love to know what your favorite 80s movies are. So let's get started. The first one is the movie that I just...
just finished tonight. I started about two days ago, and I finished it tonight, and I've seen it a hundred thousand million times. It is a Tom Hanks movie. It was released in 1984. It stars Tom Hanks, Daryl Anna, John Candy, and Eugene Levy. So, do, 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 when I watched this movie and I was obsessed with mermaids and I was obsessed with love too and I thought Tom Hanks when he was younger was so cute and like a very nerdy way like I watched him in Big I watched him in Sleepless in Seattle um a league of our own like, I was a big fan of him when I was younger. I still am. I love Tom Hanks. Top five, for sure. But I just think that they don't make movies like Splash anymore. Um, it's a very or original concept. Um, you know, where a regular adult male falls in love with a mermaid and it's funny it's romantic and the ending made me cry I'm not gonna lie this last time that I saw it when I finished it during the credits and that song came on what was the song called when love came for me I mean like I started crying like a baby and um it just made me think of all the times I watched it with my mother. I just, I just love it. Such a good movie. And Daryl Anna and Tom Hanks had such good chemistry, too. I'm not a huge fan of Daryl Anna. Well, actually, I kind of am a fan of her. Because I love her in Grumpy Old Men as well. And then I also love her in A Walk to Remember. Uh, but uh, I guess she quit Hollywood because I haven't seen her in a movie recently. But so that is my, is number one. Um, like I said before, it's in, these movies are in no particular order. Like number one. Is it number one and number ten? Is it number ten? I love all these movies just the same. Okay, number two is another movie that my mom, me and my mom used to watch all the time. This movie stars Elizabeth Shue and it was released in 1989. movie it is. Adventures in Babysitting. <sighs> Adventures in Babysitting is my favorite Elizabeth Shue movie. It's just one of those movies I can watch over and over and feel that nostalgic feeling every time I watch it. Just, I feel like that six-year-old again that watched it and thought how amazing it was that they went to this big city and they found Thor and the kids and the, the kid that has a crush on the babysitter and Daryl the funny kid that just wants to tag along and it's it's so funny and um, just in case you've never seen it uh, Elizabeth Shue's character 
pretty much her boyfriend blew her off at the beginning of the movie. They're supposed to go on a date together, and instead of going on a date, she has to babysit uh, two kids, a uh, 15-year-old and a 7-year-old named Sarah. changes. 
changes her for the better. And then they have a really good love story. And the kids, his four sons. Well, just in case you didn't watch my last video. My top ten video. Uh, Kurt Russell's character, his name is... Oh my gosh. Is it Dean? His name's Dean. And he is a carpenter. And he goes to this, to this yacht to build a shoe closet for this very um, rich biatch of a woman uh, who is Goyan's character, whose name is Joanna. But in the movie, she falls off her yacht and she gets amnesia. And like this movie would not fly nowadays because people are just so like, oh my god, how could he do that? Like, so she gets amnesia. And then Kurt Russell's character was like, oh, okay, well, I'll get her back for not paying me for building her horseshoe closet and being a biatch. So he pretends that she is his wife. And the mother of his four sons. Yeah. Let's not dissect that at all. But it's just so fucking good, you guys. Like, Goldion and Russell Crowe were already together in real life when this movie came out. And you can obviously tell because their chemistry is off the charts. And there's just so many quotable moments. And Kurt Russell, oh my gosh. And Goldion, I love her. I love that she's not the typical, like, absolutely gorgeous actress. But people love her because she's so funny. And she snagged Kurt Russell. I mean, come on. So, overboard. Number five. This movie was also released in 1989. This movie stars John Cusack, and it also uh, stars his sister Joan Cusack. This one is also, I'd say this one is more of a drama romance instead of a rom-com, and that is the movie Say Anything. So, I haven't seen this movie in so long, but pretty much John Cusack's character is, you know, kind of like an outcast, um, and he's been in love with the popular Victorian girl, uh, you know, through high school, and they, they just graduated, and she goes on a date with him, and they fall in love, of course, but her dad, who is a rich snob, thinks that she deserves better, and he tries to break them up, and there is the most saddest quote in this movie, okay, two things, this movie is the movie where he holds a boot box, over his head. If you guys have ever heard about that uh, scene, oh my gosh, where he holds the boot box over his head. Oh my gosh, such a just one of those scenes. You know what I mean? It just gold. You know. And then there's a scene where he's standing in the rain. He's in a phone booth, and he's telling his sister, who's actually his really his sister in real life, he's saying, she gave me a pen, I gave her my heart, and she gave me a pen. Oh gosh, I just, I'm going to have to watch the movie now. Hopefully I can get it for free. Oh, I just love it. Okay, number six. This movie was released in 1988. I watched it a long time ago, but 
I think I was a teenager when I really started loving it. And it stars Julia Roberts and the woman from, uh, I think it's Two and a Half Men, the one that passed away with the red hair, bigger woman, and a couple other actresses, I can't remember their name. But this one is Mystic Pizza. I don't know what I love about Mystic Pizza. I love that it's set in a small town. I love that it's set at a pizza shop. Because pizza is my favorite food. But it also has some pretty good plot points in the movie. Uh, plot points that once again would not fly nowadays. Uh, like, uh... <laughs> One, uh, oh, I don't want to ruin it for you guys, uh, but definitely watch it. I know it's on one of those free apps where you can watch it. Um, it's, a lot of people think it's boring, but not to me. I love it. I don't know what I love about it, to be honest. I think it's Julia Roberts' first movie, and I just adore it. Okay, number seven. This movie was released in 1985. It stars Anthony Michael Hall. And not Antonio Banderas, but uh, Amelia Estevez. Molly Ringwald and... Oh my gosh. What's Bender's name in the movie? What's the actor's name? Oh my goodness. Is it Jeff? I forget, but it's The Breakfast Club. I recently watched this movie again, and it's a classic. I recommend anybody out there that is still in high school, or even if you're not in high school, to watch this movie. It will change your life. It's pretty much just... Let me see how many students is it. The nerve more. Five. It's five students, and uh, they call themselves the Brain, the Outcast, the Athlete, the Princess, and the Criminal. And they're in. They're all in detention together, and they're all different people that typically wouldn't uh, hang out in high school during normal school days. They just realize at the end of the movie that they have so much in common. And it's just a movie about change. It's a movie about looking inside yourself. And, you know, just seeing seeing things from other people's point of views. You know, and it's, it's just so good. It's uh, one of my favorite Molly Ringwald movies. Number eight, I have not seen this movie in years, but I had to include it because I used to watch this with my brother, and then I watched it when I was a teenager. It's one of the only uh, musicals I really love, and I need to watch it now, now that I put it on this list. And I can't tell you the actors that are in it. Like, I can picture them in my mind, but I can't think of their names. But the movie is Little Shop of Horrors. Uh, I remember quoting this movie, just going around and singing, Sally Seymour is standing beside me. I mean, it's just so, it's cringy, but in a good way. It's... Feed me, Seymour. You know, there's like this big uh, plant eater of uh, 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 fly trap. Sorry, I was trying to think of what the name of the plant was. Oh my gosh, that movie. Oh, I just remember loving it. It was so weird, but in a great way. You know, oh, if they ever rape. If they ever remake Little Shop of Horrors, I'm going to flip a lid. <laughs> okay, number nine. This 
This movie was released in 1985. It stars Daniel Glover. Is that right? Danny Glover, Whoopi Goldberg, Oprah Winfrey, and if a lot of other actors. And I'm sorry, I'm starting to lose my voice. I had a little bit of a setback with uh, being sick today. Uh, a little bit of a setback. So, uh, but that movie is The Color Purple. Oh. And they tried to remake that movie. And me and my mom, I went to go see it. And we couldn't even last 20 minutes. It was horrible. Uh, at least in my opinion, it was horrible. Uh, because there's nothing. Absolutely nothing like the original. I actually think they remade it twice. And, like, why? Don't touch the original. You know, that reminds me. I recently found out. This is another, this is another one I'm going to put on the list. As a, like a, honorable mention. And that's only because I saw a post on Facebook. That they are remaking The Land Before Time. They are freaking remaking The Land Before Time. No. I am going to burn down all the theaters that will show that movie. For one thing, they showed the picture of the dinosaur. That's supposed to be in it. And I was like, what the fuck is that? That is not Littlefoot. That is not Spike. That is not Ducky. That is not, um, uh, what's the bird's name? Uh, uh, I keep wanting to say Sazu. <laughs> That's a lie, Kate Kelly. Um, Petrie? Is it Petrie? Yeah, Petrie. Or Petey. No, it's Petrie. I remember crying my eyes out when I was a little girl to that movie when the mama dies. Oh my gosh. That's another top ten that I could do one day is movies that make me cry. Because that scene with the mama and her dying, I don't know what it was about Disney and him wanting to kill the mothers, but that really tugs at my heartstrings. But yes, how dare they make, remake The Land Before Time. Okay, the last one on the list, it was released in 1987. It stars Amanda Peterson, R.I.P. by the way, and Patrick Dempsey, and that is can't buy me love. This movie instilled the love that I have for Patrick Dempsey. I think it was his first movie and he was so nerdy. I mean, I, I loved him even as a nerdy guy. I loved him before he was big dreamy. But this movie, classic 80s movie, um, it just, it's about this nerdy guy that, um, wants to take the popular girl, uh, girl out, and something happens in the movie to where he ends up paying her to go out with him, and, uh, another movie that wouldn't fly nowadays, but, uh, it's just a classic 80s movie. Patrick Dempsey is so cute in the nerdiest way. And now I'm glad to watch that one too. I love Can't Buy Me Love. Can't Buy Me Love. Love. Can't Buy Me Love. Anyways, so that was my top 10 favorite 80s movies. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Please let me know down in the comments what you would like next week's top 10 movies to be. And let me know what your favorite 
these movies are. I love you guys. I'll be talking to you soon. Okay, bye-bye.